Operation Nest Egg involves removing kiwi eggs from nests of wild monitored birds and hatching them at Rainbow Springs, Rotorua. The hatched chicks are returned back to the forest at about two weeks of age or when they reach a weight of about 1,000 grams. Yeah, I've been living here for the last 20 years in beautiful Ofango. Um, Tongariro Forest is just about a kilometre from here, so I have always taken a keen interest in what's happening there. And of course, one of the things that has been happening that's uh, made drastic changes to the place has been four tenated drops since the last 15 years. Just want to say a few things about the Kiwi Sanctuary here and, and all the information, but I, I would say it's misinformation that the Department of Conservation have been feeding the public about what's happening there and, and the consequences of, what, of their management, which officially has all been about 1080 and it's supposed to be the, um, the showpiece for how 1080 works and how good it is for our birds and our bush. They talk to us about improved kiwi, chick survival, etc. But there's no uh, proof that the population has actually increased over that time. Uh, for example, this chart here that, which was produced by the Department of Conservation to show supposed uh, kiwi number increase from 1995, from about 100 kiwi estimated to 2007, uh, climbed up to 180. However, if we look at uh, kiwi call rates over that same period, they show a lot higher call rate in the 95-96 time as opposed to in the 2000s. For example, in 95-96 uh, it was four, four calls per hour. And this is on the eastern side, which is the main core area. Uh, 97 it was 3.7 calls per hour in 2001 2.8 calls per hour and I believe with the latest report uh, in the 2013 Kiwi call rate uh, trend they measured about 1.5 for the eastern side 0 0.7 calls for the whole sanctuary per hour per hour yeah as opposed to the best result in 1996 was four and yet they do show 96 as being population a lot lower which doesn't add up in the 2011 2012 tongariro forest report it is stated that a zero mustelid tracking rate was achieved after the september 2011 aerial drop and that the tracking rate was still at zero in May of 2012. However, further into the report, it is revealed that of the 14 chicks that died for the season, seven were as a result of predation, which occurred between the months the tracking tunnels were registered as zero. Between 2009 and 2011, 45 kiwi of all ages died in the Tongariro forest, with evidence of mustelid predation as cause of death. Many were adult kiwi, and their deaths were attributed to ferret predation. When asked in an OIA how many ferrets had been trapped between 2007 and 2012, Doc stated two females, one in February 2009 and one in September 2009. Hundreds of traps are set throughout the forest. Total number of kiwi chicks monitored in the Tongariro forest between 2006 and 2013 equals 151. Total known to be alive as at December 2013 equals 18 which includes 11 from the last two seasons. The Department of Conservation claims Kiwi chick survival success when chicks reach sub-adult status, which is six months of age. Few Tongariro Kiwi make it to adult status, which is 4.5 years of age. Kiwi survival success should be measured at a population level, not based on chicks reaching six months of age. Kiwi can live for over 45 years in healthy habitats. First acknowledge the creator, the people, and the whenua. When it comes to kaitiakitanga, iwi environmental management. Back in the year of 2000, I worked for a project called Project Kiwi Whitianga. Project Kiwi at the time started back in 1991 where it was the uh, first community organisation in New Zealand for Kiwi chick survival. We trapped that project until 2007-2008 where it showed 50% kiwi chick survival per annum. 
Project Kiwi, uh, alongside Doc, decided to stop trapping and to go towards Operation Nestic and poisons. I said back then, Operation Nestic isn't the way to go due to many reasons. The first, it's unnatural to steal eggs from Kiwi. It's been very disappointing to find out uh, the Department of Conservation over the years have been taking kiwi eggs out of the Okahu Valley uh, in order to stock other parts. And it's sad and disgusting to hear that none of those eggs that have been taken out of the Okahu have been returned to the Okahu. What about the future of Okahu itself? And also to hear that uh, the eggs from out of the Okahu Valley uh, appear to be taken to replace uh, kiwi of areas that has been aerially 1080. Okahu Valley has not been 1080 and yet uh, the kiwi are surviving. And the other comment I also hear that's being made about uh, uh, the Okahu is that uh, the Okahu Valley is frequented by pig hunters and in the 77 years that I talked about the Okahu has been always being used uh, like I said as a as a, a provider for my whanau in terms of food and of course that included pig hunting so a lot of the talk that they say oh you know uh, pig hunters are uh, dogs and stuff are uh, uh, part of the uh, part of the reason why the decline in kiwis that may be so but not to the extent that we're talking about where you got to rob the nests I guess of the surviving ones and rear them in captivity and then put them back so it doesn't make any sense to me in terms of what has been done in terms of our uh, bird life, I guess, within our forests. You transmitterize your male birds, male kiwi. You find out where they're sitting on their nests. And in the right months of the year, you go into these nests, when the males have left the egg, we go on in there and uplift the egg. We uplift the egg to take it to Rainbow Springs in Rotorua, where they hatch them, and we introduce them back into the wild at a thousand grams. My argument was this. First, we're tampering with nature. We don't need to be doing Operation Nest Egg when trapping works. Second, you're introducing kiwi chicks from Rainbow Springs into the wild with no trapping, no protection from stoats. So you're introducing stoat food. Third, the kiwi coming back from Operation Nest Egg at 1,000 grams has not the muscle structure of a wild kiwi, simply due to Operation Nest Egg kiwi live in enclosures. They don't live in the wild. They don't develop correctly. Not only can they come back sick, and they have come back sick because I monitored sick birds and they died of being sick from coming back from Operation Nest Egg. They come back tame. I've released Operation Nest Egg chicks. They stand around your feet because they're tame, they've been handled. So what do you think they're gonna do when they see a cat, a stoat or a weasel? Over the last 10 years, for example, in Moiho Sanctuary up north, their populations have doubled. A meeting the other week, Doc told us that the population here, they've managed to stabilize it. That's what they're saying. So certainly nothing to be jubilant about, even if that were true. So when they release the kiwi at Tongariro like they do at Operation Nest Egg anywhere else, 
In Tongariro, for example, they're using, I understand, 1080 aerial drops. We all know that 1080 is an insecticide. We all know that kiwi eat insects. So again, we're contaminating their natural environment. We aren't preserving it. Quite clearly, stop your poisons, stop your operation nesting, and start looking after your kiwi and the environment, their natural environment they live in and we live off. Kia ora. I'm a professional trapper that works on the Coromandel Peninsula. I've worked on here for many years doing trapping of all kinds of things, dokes, rats, possums and cats. And I also do kiwi monitoring professionally and get paid to go out and listen to kiwis at night. And since they've done the 1080 drop on Moiho in 2013, I went back to the usual kiwi listen spot that I've done since 2000. And the more porks have gone. I used to hear a lot of more porks every night. We do five nights listening for two hours a night at different times of the night from sunset to midnight. And this last year, the more porks have vanished compared to the previous years. Was that just one night's monitoring, so it could have just been a bad night? No, that was the five nights monitoring, which I did it was about a week and a half after the 1080 drop. I went up there and did the five nights over a couple of weeks at different times of the night, like first thing just on dusk and last thing at night, 10 o'clock before midnight. So it was all times. Is, when you're there, do you actually, are you there to count more pork or are you only counting kiwi? Just kiwi, but you can put down on the sheet, you know, more pork calls, how many per hour, if there's lots, few, many. But Leon, can you uh, uh, tell me why this drop is being done? This drop here? Yeah. It's being done purely for the ecosystem. Yeah. Are you targeting a specific species? Uh, we're targeting possums and rats. Has this area been trapped before? I think any other questions from here on in, you really need to direct towards Rebecca. Is that okay? Thanks, Tom. Does Rebecca know everything? She's our spokesperson at the moment. So what we want to do is to make sure that everyone gets the right information and we're not cross-information cross anybody, that we're going to put it all through one person. Yeah, I got a, a, a phone call from the, the local police officer and yeah, he was informing me that um, I should not go to the to the site um, that I, he didn't want to see me behind any protest lines or any any negative action. Andrew, would you like to come and? No, if you'd like a response, you talk to Senior Sergeant Shields at Thames. Yeah. Thank you. We want to know why why these warnings are been issued to farmers and different people around here. You know, I'm trying to be impolite, but I haven't got answers for you. So there's no answer to ringing people and, and telling them to keep your nose clean. Can we, who should we um, ask? Who's the best person to ask? Same person I just said then. Which one? Well, well, that person. Sergeant the ICMP of Coromandel. Okay. And yeah. Sorry, is he back here? You'd know a lot, wouldn't you? Is that Thames? <laughs> the Department of Conservation are using the police to scare people off. I thought they were talking about dropping 1080 only where it's inaccessible. It's, they've yeah, dropped it just, we were that. here early this morning, Clive, and they have been dropping it just behind the camping ground. Just now? Yes. All the way along right the road that we came down. On the east. It just flew down there and back up again. So, inaccessibility is not their criteria. No. I might ask them actually, are you coming back to bury all the carcasses? Yes. Well, well apparently it's, you have to, it's on the yes, manufacturer's it is label. On the label. Yeah, you yes. have to bury them a certain depth in the yes. ground. Yes. It's and a flip of a lot of carcasses of to bury. Of course it is. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. I mean,
but I don't know. I still want to know why we went from Agent Orange and Monsanto owned Agent Orange to 1080, which Monsanto owned and then sold to Total Chemicals. It's the dollar. Well, the camp is closed now and it may remain closed for a month because their water supply is um, inside the controlled area, as they call it, inside the drop. So how long has the camp been closed? Uh, Monday we're going to have the camp We've got to have enough time. Have you just connected the water supply? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. How long is the camping ground closed for? Till Monday. Till Monday. Oh. Yep. Yeah. And we've got to have enough time for the guys to walk all the tracks. Yeah, but what, um, about, what about the water supply? 1600. Sorry? What about the water supply? Um, once again, we've been yeah. about to answer all those questions. Which here. is a, it is a draw. I've been to know this. It's my mother about the job, to be honest. Well, it's not just the bigger one, I think. <laughs> 